Hey, and thanks for tuning in. Docker is usually used for solving your deployment problem. It looks like this, that first you're developing in your own local develop environment, and then you're creating this Docker file, which in the end turns into a Docker image. Once you have your Docker image, it's really easy to spin up all of these containers, which are basically replicas of your image. But often Docker becomes this extra step you have to do before deployment. And the problem is right here. So when you develop a feature locally, there's no guarantee of it working inside of Docker. So what we're going to do today is to try and use Docker as your local development environment. So here we are. I have done the code in advance, but I'm going to walk you through it and we are going to see it running. So what I have here is a Python application using Flask just to put up a single endpoint. As you can see, it's giving me an error already. That's because I don't have Flask installed in my local environment. And that's what we're gonna use Docker for. So the only thing I do here is I import Flask and I make this single route at the root where it returns hello world. We have a Docker file, so we can build the image. It just uses any Python base image. It installs the requirements from our file here. Let's just briefly take a look at it. It just says that we need to install Flask in this specific version. It then runs pip to install rum this file then copies over the source code it sets this environment variable which is something from the last hello world tutorial it basically just says where our index file is and notice that it's actually not where it's pointing to in our in our project but that's because over here we are working inside of the docker image in a folder called app and we copy everything from the source folder and put it in there so it will be in the same directory when it's inside the docker image and lastly, we just run it. So we give it the command flask run. And then we provide the host like this. It just basically means that it'll be available from outside of the Docker image. The last thing I have is our Docker compose file. And this is the same as using Docker run. I just think it's much easier to have it all organized in the Docker compose file like this. It'll define a Python app, build it from the Docker file it finds here and expose the port 5000. And then here's the thing where we're going to work with it locally. It'll actually take the source folder and mount it inside the Docker image to the app folder. Remember the app folder is where we put our source code inside. Lastly, it'll say, and this is just Flask specific, that we should use an environment variable called Flask env equals development. That's just so we get hot reloading. But let's try it out. As mentioned, we get an error here. So what we want to do is actually um, attach the Docker image to our Visual Studio Code editor. And we can do that by using an extension that is called Remote Containers. So the first thing we want to do is spin up our Docker container and then we can hook into it using this extension. So let's go to our terminal and say Docker Compose up. Notice if we do this, we are going to get an error. And that's because we don't have a file called Docker Compose.yml. And I have on purpose called it Docker Compose dash dev, just not to confuse things. This is only being going to be used for development. So we're just going to provide it with a argument here and say Docker Compose dash dev. And there we have our Docker image up and running. We can test it if we go to the browser, say hello world. All right, back to Visual Studio Code. We're going to find the command for attaching a running Docker container. It'll find it for us, very easy. And it'll open up a new image. And now we are actually inside of the Docker container. So now we are actually inside of the Docker image and now we don't get an error. This is not because we fixed it yet. Um, there's still one step to do. This is just right now because it doesn't understand Python at all. It just reads it as a basic text file. So we need to go into extensions and install Python. We're just going to do this once. It'll remember it for next time. So this is actually installing the Python extension inside of the Docker image. So now that it's installed, we can go back to our file and we should get Python auto completion. So if we make a new endpoint here, call it test, find test, return tests is working. We should now be able to, and we can see it by looking at our terminal that Flask has detected a change here in our file. We should be able to go to 
tests. Yes. And now, since it's actually mounted, if we, let's just try and shut down the image. Visual Studio Code will be very unhappy, but we just do it like this, shut it down. And we're back to our local environment. You can see that it has actually changed because of the mount we made. So this way you will always be ready to start developing by using our Docker Compose file. And you will always be ready to deploy simply by building the Docker image as you usually do. And as an added bonus, using this technique, you don't even have to worry about virtual environments when working in Python. All you do is put your requirements inside this file. And whenever you use Docker Compose, it'll install all of the dependencies for you.